happening everybody this is steve and welcome back to junk drummer tv where i give my initial reactions my analysis and my hot takes on the drummers of today and yesterday and maybe tomorrow if i stick around that long i am a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician i have been for the last 20 years okay everybody we are now officially into the comment section suggestions and uh, of the last seven videos that i have done this guy is the most requested we're going to be watching gavin harrison today uh much to the relief of some commenters this will be a more traditional react video because i don't know anything about gavin harrison the only thing i know about him is he's british He's a prog drummer. He plays with Box Beard and King Crimson and apparently Pineapple Thief. And I know those things because I looked him up on Wikipedia. So, uh, you know, in full disclosure, I'm not a big, huge prog listener anymore. You know, I obviously love Rush and I love Yes. Uh, I really like Dream Theater's first record. Uh, cringe as it is i did listen to some fate's warning when i was younger but uh i'm kind of a song fan i'm not even sure if i like playing drums i just really like playing songs and drums are just the thing that i do to play those songs so uh a lot of music that is uh just a lot of like uh drum olympics for the sake of drum olympics i'm not a uh, uh, big into now that being said i really do like king crimson and i guess maybe he's the guy that uh, replaced bill bruford who i do love so with that being said uh we're going to be listening to gavin harrison and he's playing uh, a track from a band called the pineapple thief which apparently is a uh, prog band from england thank you wikipedia so let's get into it <laughs> Another Vic Firth video. And they're in your window. So, like that first thing right there. People don't realize that you can play drums melodically. If you've ever heard that really famous Max Roach solo, the drum also waltzes. Steve Smith does a great version of that too, if you can find that. Uh, that whole uh, solo is just the drums being very melodic. Uh, you know, right off the bat here, you see that he's got three up, two down. He has a lot of pitches that he can mess with. And this whole first little, uh, you know, verse one thing, he's playing this little tom, uh, uh, this rhythmic tom melodic thing that's happening here. And it's really, really cool. You can be melodic while playing drums. And also while we have this stopped, I totally picked this video because I just started it and I really like the finish of that drum set. That thing, that's really melodic. You have like another melodic line going on in the song. It's really smart, it's really cool. Man, this dude's like 53 or 56 or something like that. He looks great. Great pants, too. Ah, ha, ha, right there, the backwards drum fill. I know our drum sets are set up, uh, you know, high to low, and that makes us have the tendency of, do, of doing what I call the NASCAR drum fill. Start your hands and turn right. <clears throat> now, I'm obviously from the south, and I know that NASCAR turns left, but you know what I mean. Uh, that's a cool thing to do right here. Uh, I'm going to bring it back just a little bit, <clears throat> and you can see how he plays that drum fill backwards. He starts from his uh, floor toms and goes up. It's just another way to get out of the mundane com commonalities that we can get into in playing drums. It's coming up right here. Yeah, plays that little six tuplet feel coming up. Ah, he's playing some really cool uh, uh, ghost notes right there. Yeah, you know, a lot of our ghost notes can just kind of become the E's and the U's, you know, that stuff. But if you notice right here, this is going to be what, exactly what he's playing. But he's playing, uh, you know, some uh, ghost note things that are on the ands and the numbers. 
that kind of thing. That's a really cool ghost note move that's, that's kind of atypical. Right there. It's a measure of five or something. There's some extended phrase on that measure. Uh, man, I really like the way this guy plays. He's not playing crazy over the top. When you hear Prague, immediately you think of just, you know, a drummer that just has to get every chop out in every measure. That's another really melodic drum fill. Okay, so right here, this is a common fusion prog trope where the band plays some sort of unison hit and the drummer plays big crazy drum, so, uh, drum fills through it. This is really common. Some uh, hand-foot combination stuff there. So yeah, I wish I could have found some good uh, drum cam video of him playing with a band. Uh, again, filming, playing along with a recording like this is a lot like playing drums with a condom on. You don't really get to get that energy, uh, you know, and vibe flow between the, the people who are playing. Like right now with this solo, you know, he's not really being able to emote with the, with the soloist. And this guy's really fluid. Uh, here's something else you can notice about his technique. I think this is some molar stuff. I don't know anything about molar technique. A lot of my technique really came from drumline. Uh, if you notice, his fulcrum is moved. You know, uh, traditionally we think of the fulcrum being up here. He's moved this back here and now his fulcrum is back, back this way. Uh, I don't know a lot about that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that comes from the molar technique. You know, I've watched some of those videos online too of like Jim Chapin trying to explain it. And man, it sounds like, like really hard arithmetic to me. Uh, but there's something to that technique. Excellent pants. So then this is kind of like a, a, a variation on the first theme that came in that first verse. Now this band's really starting to sound proggy. Again, I don't know anything about Pineapple Thief. There's that backward drum fill again. Tendencies are a killer of creativity and you have that tendency of just going down the drums all the time. Uh, it, can, it can handcuff you creatively. Woo! Man, this dude's good, man. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, ooh, like right here, this is a good good thing to check out. Uh, you know, this right here, that the, the song is kind of kicking into high gear, and if you notice in his left foot, he's uh, going uh, eighth notes there, where usually we just kind of play, you know, quarter notes there. He's wanting the, the song to kind of pick up pace and get some frenetic energy, and he's playing eighth notes in that hi-hat. That's a really good uh, 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 example of using your hi-hat to propel the song. Yeah, right there. This drum sounds sweet. I'm pretty sure those are sonars. Woo! Yeah, man. I like this guy. He's being tasteful. You know, he's still showing that he's a badass. But he's still playing for the song. And that's kind of my rub with a lot of prog stuff is it's, yeah, backwards uh, fill again. Uh, that's my rub with a lot of prog stuff is that uh, the songs are just kind of excuses to just jack off on the drums for 10 minutes. But this guy's playing really, really tasteful. Yeah. Yeah, man, this guy makes me want to go practice and get cool pants. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what that uh, uh, that extended phrase right there is. I think it's five. I'd have to count it out. This band doesn't sound British. They don't sound like a British band. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nice clean double stroke there. Okay, okay, Gavin Harrison. Man, I'm cool with that. Uh, that was 
some real badass drumming with maybe the best sounding drum set that we've had on Junk Drummer TV so far. Uh, I play Premiere, but I'm a big fan of Sonar, and that makes me want to go spend way too much money on a Sonar drum set. Of course, I'll never be able to play it like that. Uh, yeah, man, thanks to the YouTube uh, commenters for turning me on to him. Obviously, I knew of him. You know, I read Modern Drummer Magazine and, uh, you know, other publications. And he's one of those new drum gods that's in all the ads. And, uh, you know, he's a big-time clinician, which is a good way for that dude to make money. Because, let's be honest, there's not a lot of money in the prog scene these days. Uh, not if there, not if there ever was. But, uh, yeah, man, there's some cool shit to learn from this guy. Uh, yeah, he's definitely playing sonar. Those are those sonar uh, pedals down there. Yeah, man, check that dude out, Gavin Harrison. That's going to make me want to watch more of him. I want to see him in King Crimson. I'm I'm a pretty big fan of King Crimson. I got to see them once when they were doing the 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 double trio on stage. And again, I love Bill Bruford. Uh, man, you can learn some things from Gavin Harrison. That dude is a wealth of knowledge. And the biggest thing, and I didn't get to talk about this before, is that dude has some real fat grooves. I would uh, guess that that guy's done a lot of session work with stuff outside of the prog world where it's more like song oriented and where the groove is the thing that guy's got just real nice feel and touch and just all the things you want out of a good drummer so yeah man gavin harrison good on you so if you enjoyed all that, please uh, uh, share, like, and comment. Uh, also, please uh, ask me any questions because I eventually want to do a Q&A episode. So ask me anything. Uh, and uh, listen to Gavin Harrison, man. That's good shit. And remember, keep practicing until it's easy.